I'm John Wyatt. How are you, Wyatt? I'm glad you got here. Be seated. Thank you. The department ordered me to cooperate with you. The counterfeit money situation in this section has become pretty bad. Lots of it in circulation. And it seems to be coming from the Mexican borderline. Have you picked up any clues? Nothing definite. Some years ago, two men operating a medicine show were caught with some of the bad money on them. One of them got 10 years and served his time. The other turned state's evidence and was released. Are those the men you suspect? Yes. We just got word that the ex-convict is operating his medicine show again over toward the Mexican border in Arizona. Well, it'll be pretty tough to trail them if they slip across the border. You needn't worry on that score. Our relations with the Mexican officials there are very friendly. And I've already made all arrangements with them to permit you to cross the border if your man tries to get away. You will have their full cooperation. Oh, that's fine, Colonel. Well, this is a new one for me. Looks like I'm going to have to join a medicine show. <laughs> well, good luck. Thanks, Ben. Been a medicine show through here lately? Yes. There was one pulled out of here about five days ago. <laughs> they owed everybody in town and... Had to leave in a hurry. <laughs> you don't know which way they were going, do you? I think they were headed west. Much obliged. I'll be back in a few minutes, Sam. I haven't seen anything of a medicine show around here, have you? Yeah, there was one here, but they pulled out last night. The sheriff wouldn't let them stop. He said they were a bunch of crooks. Which way did they go? Towards Arizona. Thanks. Hey there! Well, this is 
Cook. There's a sheriff and a posse after you. They're going to attach your show. The state line shouldn't be far ahead. You better step on it. Well, much obliged, stranger. Maybe that'll make it go fast. Suppose you two get together. 
and kind of rehearse a little bit and everything, we'll get together a new act, feature it, and call it the living target. Well, I guess that's all right if Miss Carter doesn't mind. That's all right with me, as long as you don't hit me too often. <laughs> How are your nerves? Uh, don't you worry about his nerves, Linda. My famous remedies will take care of that. No, thanks, Dad. I think we can get along without that. <laughs> well, I'm a boy. You're a part of the show. Well, that's great. I've wanted to join a medicine show for some time. Well, uh, now that you've joined the show, I guess I ought to give you your watch back. Well, that's very nice of you. Why don't you tie your horse on Beth and ride along with us for a while? We'll drive slowly. Thanks, I will. Arizona. Oh, it's right on the border, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is. You know, we, uh, we've never played that town before. No. Ought to be some mighty good business down there. How long have you been in the medicine show business? <laughs> Just ever since I was a boy. That is, except for about ten years. Oh, you were out of it for ten years, eh? Yes. Yes, I, I had some trouble with a business associate of mine. I took advantage of an opportunity to be connected with a government institution for a time. Oh, I see. That's your camp spot. You better tell Curly to be more careful. Well, I'll tell him about it. Say, but wait till you see our new 20s. They're great. Now, that's what we came for. We have a deal all set. Get rid of 500 of those in Tucson. Say, that's fine. I'll go get them for you. In the meantime, you boys... Stay around town, but keep out of sight as much as possible. I'll be back in a couple of hours with the money. trouble with that last batch? Well, Pete said there was too much red in it, but he got rid of them all right. Oh, he wants 500 of the new 20s. Oh, uh, that's swell. Oh, here's a letter from the boys down in Las Cruces. Anything the matter, boss? Plenty. Old Dr. Carter's heading this way with that medicine show of his. If he sees me here, he'll sure mess things up. You know, there might be ways of making him change his mind about coming here. Yeah, that's right. Take Tex and Slim with you. Okay, boss. Come on, fellas. Well, sir, that's a remarkable exhibition, young man. Yes. Now, I think that if we could find somebody that could hold a cigar between their teeth, the act would be complete. Well, here, Doc. You hold this mat. Stand right over there. I'll show you my mirror shot. Uh, uh, well, uh, well, not just now, young man. No, uh, we've, uh, we've got to be getting down to the town. Yes, uh, we'd better get started, too. Well, you folks go on ahead. I've got to give my horse a drink. <clears throat> well, you'd better give him a little shot of Dr. Carter's remedy here. <laughs> oh, I think he'd better stick to water. Well, all right, son. Well, we'll see you later. But hurry up, though, because we've got to get a show set up in the next town. All right, Doc. All right.
Step on it, Dad. Someone's after us again. Wait a minute, partner. Hey, we were just trying to play a joke on a couple of fellows, and, well, I guess we got the wrong people. It doesn't look like a mistake to me, and it's a cinch you got the wrong people. And don't forget it. I'm telling you, boss, the cowboy of that show is plenty tough. Why, you ride up behind us and take us all off our horses. Nothing we could do about it. But lie out of it. What? And that's not all. There's something that show up on the American side. The game will be up if old man Carter ever sees me here. We got to get that show out of town. Yeah, that's right. You go across the border and bring that cowboy over here. You know, a little money will do wonders sometimes. I get you. There are a lot of things you could do to help besides just standing around looking. Well, I was afraid I might get in the way. There's a bucket in there. Would you mind going and getting some water? Be glad to. Well, Linda, I guess I'd better be getting up the street and let the townsfolks know that the greater Carter Madison show is in town, huh? Just a minute, Dad. You remember that last town you were in? Yes, well, that's right. All right, we'll see you later, dear. Hello. Wait a minute. A friend of yours over the Mexican side wants to talk to you. Friend of mine? Yeah. Sure you aren't making another mistake? 
No, not this time. All right. Thought you said it was somebody I know. Now wait a minute. I'm Curly Joe. Now boy, tell me you're a pretty good man in a jam. Now let's cut out the compliments and get on to business. What do you want me for? No, that's the way to talk. You're working for old Doc Carter, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'll make you a proposition if you're interested. What is it? I'll make it worth your while if that show leaves town today. What's your game? No game. It's just that I don't want competition. Dr. Carter Shaw draw all my trade away from me. No, I'm not interested. I don't play my cards that way. All right, stranger, then I'll deal from the bottom. You and that show will be out of town tonight. Or I'll be over there looking for you. Well, the show always goes on. So come over early and avoid the rush. Now, neighbors, if you would just step down here, a little bit closer to the platform, we're about to start the entertainment, my friends, that you've come to see. We're going to start it off by asking the Texas Zoo here to sing, to render that soul stern, that heart fluttering ballad entitled When We Were Young and Foolish. All right, let her go, boys. My friend, the Texas Zoo. When we were young and foolish and easily led astray, we went to moonlight dances and danced the night away. Was at the dance we met them. They asked if we were alone. They danced and in the morning took us home. T'was in our mother's hallway. The lights were burning low. They hugged us and they kissed us. And they would not let us go. We screamed but got no answer. Believe it or not, it's true. All for the sake of honor. Our eyes were black and blue. Now take this as a warning to young boys like you and me. You ne'er can trust a woman from six to sixty-three. All right, thank you, my friends, thank you. Now we're going to have some more entertainment here in just a minute, neighbors. But right now, my friends, I've got a message for you. Listen, friends, let me tell you something. Long before the hand of man set foot in this country, it was uninhabited. Yeah, only the Indians lived here. And sickness among those Indians, my friends and neighbors, was absolutely unknown. Because, that's what I wanted you to ask me, friend, why? I'll tell you why. Because they had the secret. They had the secret of good health. They had a compound, my friends. A compound made of roots, herbs, bark and bitter, and that compound is known to the world today as Dr. Carter's famous Indian remedies. Listen, friends, I want to tell you something. Fifteen years ago, I was given up for the doctors. Yeah, they told me that I couldn't live for a week, but I fooled them. Yes, sir, and I got well. And let me tell you something, that if you've got the proper amount of determination, listen, you can overcome any kind of a physical handicap with a proper amount of determination. Why, listen, I once knew a man that didn't have a tooth in his head. Yet that man learned to play a bass drum better than anybody I ever listened to. Now, that's an absolute fact, friend. I only deal in facts. I'm telling you the truth. I went out into the country. I went out in the great open spaces. 
And I lived with the Indians. And I was cured by those Indians. I was cured by taking that secret compound of theirs. And let me tell you something that those Indians, my friends, for generations have been laughing up their sleeves. Uh, at least laughing up their blankets at the doctors. Well, that's an absolute fact. And I brought back with me to civilization the secret of that marvelous compound known today as Dr. Carter's Indian Remedy. Now, friends, I'm going to give you an opportunity a little bit later to buy a bottle of that remedy for the advertising price of one dollar. One dollar is all it's going to cost you. Right now, I'm going on with the entertainment. My friends, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce one of the most amazing, one of the most astounding performances ever displayed on any stage. Introducing Princess Natasha. <laughs> and her partner, Cowboy John. <laughs> who are about to offer for your approval a thrilling exhibition, an astounding, amazing performance of expert marksmanship. Let me have your attention.
Say, mister, I guess I can use a bottle of that. We just received a communication from the American government. They suspect counterfeit money is being distributed from this side of the border. Speak well. You will proceed to investigate at once. Hear me, Henry. And be careful. Any talk on that stolen stuff yet? No, but I expect one any minute. Better go over and see if you can't stir something up. Well, something stir up all right. I had one of our boys plant some of the phony dough in the wagon. What? You had him plant some of that stuff in the wagon? Well, sure. Why, you sap. You've messed things up right. If Dr. Carter ever gets his eyes on any of that dough, you'll know right where it come from. Now we'll have to get him out of the way. You go over and stir up the townspeople. That'll take care of that cowboy. I'll have a couple of the boys pick up Dr. Carter and the girl while you're doing that. All right, Curly. After that trouble here today, don't you think we'd better move on? You no, know, there's too many people want this Joe to leave town. I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Besides, I think you'd get tired of traveling all the time. Oh, no. I'm used to it. I've been with the show all my life. Except for a while, when Dad was away. You see, my mother died, so I have to take care of Dad. It's rather difficult sometimes when he's drinking. We usually have to leave town in a hurry. But I suppose it can't be helped in this business. I'm doing all the talking. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Well, there's not much to tell. I'm just a cowboy, drifting from place to place. Looking for steers? Wild steer. <laughs> oh, there comes Dad back from town. He's probably looking for a drink of that nerve tonic of his. Oh, and I left the key under my pillow. He's sure to find it. Won't you go up and get it for me? If he sees me, he'll know something's up. Certainly, Miss Linda, I'll get it. Oh, hello there, young man. Hello. Hello, Doc. Uh, why, this is a beautiful day, isn't it, young man? Yes, sir, just fills a fellow with a vigor of youth. Yes, sir, I'd like to be young again. I was, uh, I was just about to take a drink of my wonder tonic. I don't know how I'd get along without that stuff, young man. No, sir. It's a veritable godsend, my boy. A gift to humanity. Well, doggone it, my, my daughter must have taken those keys out of my pocket. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, I was just about to offer to drink a little toast with you, but I guess we'll have to forego that pleasure until I can find Linda. That's all right, Doc. I wasn't thirsty anyway. I just left Linda down at the creek. Uh, down at the... Oh, well, I'll... Oh, there you are, Linda. <clears throat> I've, uh, I've been looking for you. Say, hey, what's the name of that next town we're going to? I don't know. Well, I'll end anywhere. Hi there, sharpshooter. Where's the doc? Oh, he went down to the creek looking for Linda. Well, <laughs> A family argument, huh? We better wait here for him then. Well, that druggist is liable to get awful sore at me. Well, now don't get excited, uh, Dad. It's bad for your nerves. I'm sure this deal can wait a little while. I know, Linda, but I That's promise. That's right, Doc. The deal'll have to wait. We've got a new deal for you. Come on with us. Say, she here. What is the meaning of this unwarranted intrusion? Cut out the big words and get going. Yeah. All right, you too. Now, Sheriff, I ain't saying that medicine ain't no good. But what I am saying is that while I was watching that show, somebody stole my watch. And Jim here lost his six cents. 
Yeah, the one I got from that rich widow woman. And there was a lot of sentiment attached to that pin. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sheriff, you ought to go up and search that wagon. That ought to settle it. He's right, Sheriff. That's what you ought to do. All right, Herman. You take a look at that wagon. I'm beginning to wonder if that gang across the border is mixed up in this trouble we've been in. I don't know. Well, did Doc Carter have any enemies? Only his old partner that sent him to the pen for counterfeiting. The doc knows he framed him. He's been looking for him ever since. He swears he'll kill him on sight. Well, what'd this fellow look like? Doc said he's got curly hair and a scar on his left cheek. Curly hair and a scar. Here you are, eh? Where's the rest of your gang? They aren't here. Search this place. Here's something, Sheriff. Hmm. Whose bunk is that? That's mine. Hi. Hey. That's my watch. That's all the evidence we need. Take him along. Come on, you fellas, get going. This looks like the spot he fell off. I'm sure you hit him. Look around, boys. Look! to the water. Circle the lake and see if we can pick up his tracks. I'm an American government agent. Here are my credentials. Oh, yes. Your superiors have notified me of your coming. What can we do for you? Well, uh, I'm after a counterfeiting gang, and I think I've found the man that's at the head of it. He's on your side of the line, and I'd like to make an arrest. And who is this man? Well, his name is Curly Joe. He runs a saloon here. Curly Joe. It is a pleasure to assist you, and wish you success. We have had a man watching Curly Joe's place for some time. He may be able to give you some assistance, and if you need more help, you can look upon us. Well, thank you, sir, but I think I can handle it all right myself. I could use a gun if you have one to spare. Oh, certainly. Right.
Curly Joe around? No, and I don't expect him. Well, I'll just wait. Just a minute. You're under arrest. What for? You know what for, counterfeit. You can't get away with it. This is Mexico. You don't think I'd try to make an arrest without getting extradition papers, do you? Senor, we are going to jail. Oh, wait a minute. Let me explain. Wait a minute. I... You know what, What is the meaning of this? I was trying to arrest Curly Joe, and during the battle, your men picked on the wrong man. I can't make him understand who I am. Release him, pronto! Armando Cantos, pronto! Curly Joe. He probably go to the hideout on Paradise Ranch. Four miles out of here. No, no. He go this way through the tunnel. My horse is there. I get the rally. He will need help.
What's all the shooting for? That cowboy from Carter's show was following me, and I plugged him. He's a federal man. A federal man? Yeah. You'll find him around the bend there. You better go drag him out of sight. Come on, fellas. Wait a minute. Where's Carter and the girl? They're down the mine. I got them tied up. Fine. that you've caught up with me, it looks like the end of the trail for you. Now, just fix that pal of yours, the federal man, for putting in on my counterfeit game. And now, it's your turn. What's happened to Dad? Well, maybe he's having a hard time finding the justice of peace. He'll be here. Yeah. yeah. No, sir, justice. Justice. If you suffer from sour stomach, indigestion, rheumatism, sciatic, or lumbago, that's the finest stuff you can get in the world. It's 
power. I'll stay here. Yeah. 